According to public opinion, awards, accolades and box office success, Titanic is one of the best, if not the best, movie ever made. And although you may not agree with this statement, I for one can think of at least five films I rate above it, in terms of filmmaking techniques, quality of practical and visual effects and minute attention to detail, it most definitely is one of the best. In this video we're going to take a look at those practical and visual effects and give you four reasons why we think this is so. Number one, models. Most of the exterior shots of the Titanic at sea were actually models and the practical effects team built several different ones. There was a 7.5 meter that was used to create and envisage possible shots, a 1 6th scale for castle, a 1 8th scale 18 meter long model of the ship's stern that could be made to sink multiple times, a 1 20th scale 14 meter model that was incredibly detailed and had over 100,000 rivets that had to be drilled and added by hand one by one. This model had to be this detailed because it had to be able to stand up in some pretty close-up shots. This also meant that it had to be historically correct too, so they had a Titanic historian in the workshop to act as a consultant as they built it. This model was used for perhaps the two most iconic shots in the movie, the I'm Flying shot and the Million Dollar shot. Number 2. Iconic Shots both of these shots used a similar technique, but had totally different purposes. The million dollar shot was designed to show both the majesty and splendour of the Titanic ship and its passengers unsuspecting excitement. The 120th scale model was shot on a motion control green screen soundstage. That camera motion was then translated onto a green screen soundstage with Jack and Fabrizio on a turntable and the camera dollying back. These shots were then composited and when the camera couldn't dolly back anymore, they transitioned to CG digi doubles for the actors. Next they added CG water, CG smoke, digital birds, a digital flag and wake elements taken from real footage and digitally manipulated. They also added motion captured digital people. Yep, you heard it right motion captured. The Titanic was one of the first films to use mocap for stunts and additional extras, and in this particular shot they were used to populate the deck. A similar technique was used for the I'm flying shot, but this time the turntable could rise and descend whilst turning. This gave us the lurching feeling of just how big the ship was and just how vulnerable Jack and Rose were as they stood unknowingly perched on the edge of disaster. Number 3. The Iceberg The iceberg moment was filmed in front of a green screen soundstage on a gigantic set they built in Baja, Mexico. They started by filming a load of ice dropping onto the deck from a chute with a motion control camera. Then they shot a miniature iceberg with some camera movement and lights to simulate the light cast from the ship's windows as it went past. Next they created CG ice elements to bridge between the miniature iceberg and the real ice falling onto the deck. Then everything was composited together into the final shot. Number 4. The Sinking The sinking scene required every digital tool, every special effect and every camera trick the filmmakers could think of. They started filming on their massive set in Baja, Mexico. Here they built a 236 meter long, almost one to one, scale model of the Titanic. This model could be split into separate sections to allow for different angles of tilt. The main part could be tilted 6 degrees. The front 55 meter section could be tilted even further. And the rear section could tilt a full 90 degrees. Even though they could tilt the main ship 6 degrees, the real Titanic would have tilted a lot more. To compensate for this, the filmmakers used a Dutch angle. This is a technique where they tilt the camera on the x-axis to increase the inclination of the ship and then composite a level waterline to complete the effect. However, this may have achieved the illusion visually, but physically this meant that the actors sliding down the 6 degree deck were going too slow. So they added special rollers to their life jackets to enable them to slide faster down the shallower incline, thus making it seem steeper. When they filmed the rear section of the ship, in order to avoid injuries on the steep incline, most of the set's props were actually made of rubber. Here you can see the capstan bounce and move as people hit it. 
All these techniques were then combined with footage shot from the scale models breaking and sinking, actors shot against a green screen soundstage, actors and extras shot in a big pool of frothing water, CG digi-doubles, stunt footage and footage of stunt people combined with digi-doubles. And because they filmed the scene in Mexico where it's warm but the Titanic sank in the freezing cold North Atlantic Ocean, they also had to add visible breath. These were actually real breath elements shot on a black set and then composited onto the actors, and it had to be done for over 100 shots. All this goes to show the tremendous amount of work that goes on in the background of a movie like this. Things we never see, years of researching, careful planning, meticulous preparation, and skillful building to produce a blockbuster movie that, with a runtime of over three hours, may have seemed quite long, but still was only ever the tip of the iceberg.